2021, aka a year that had promise, but ultimately ended up being a cut and paste of 2020. Well, I mean, in my opinion anyway, if you enjoyed it, then good for you. Regardless, it fared pretty well in the music department. Sure, there were a couple of disappointing albums, but like The Killers, no critics, Pressure Machine is not their best album, and Coldplay, oh, we'll get to that one, but it was a pretty solid year overall, with live performances resuming, Biffy Claro and Royal Blood kicking ass, The Weeknd still doing weekend things and doing them great, Kasabian not splitting up, <coughs> an actual rock band won Eurovision and are actually good, but of course, the year had its fair share of dumpster fires. So much, I've extended the list of 15 songs, plus some honourable mentions. Some of the songs I've on the list because they're straight up terrible, while others are one just because I expect so much more from the artist. And as far as big hits go, this year hasn't been bad at all, so I had to go for a few deeper cuts. And before you come at me with, Oh, I'd like to see what songs you think are good. Well, I made a Spotify playlist, which you can find links in the description. Anyway, some quick rules. One song per lead artist. Songs from last year that had more success this year are eligible. And also a new one. No overtly political songs, because let's be honest, they divide everyone, and the last thing you need to do is get into a heated argument over politics with some English guy who plays Plants vs Zombies. Right, let's play the honourable mentions quick, and then we'll get on with the actual list. Hey, yeah, we fancy like apple on a date night, to Burma Street, stay with the So if you'd like some brief explanations as to why these songs are on the list, you can check the description below. Anyway, let's go on with the main list. Here we go. I'm so lonely. When I asked for suggestions for this list, a lot of people immediately started battling off songs by the Beebs, reasonable given the atrocity he released last year. But honestly, his music has been so much better in 2021, I was going to give him a pass. But I can't overlook this song. It's so whiny. The chorus is just awful, the lyrics are so blatant it really takes away from what he's trying to say, and the swearing feels so forced. The electric piano arrangement played by Benny Blanco, which is enough to make him a featured artist apparently, can't save it either. Good try, but it's a pretty lousy apology song that makes Sorry seem as deep as the Pacific. Boy, you can kiss my oh, 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 you can kiss my Look, I gotta give credit to Little Mix for soldiering on without Jesse Nelson. Hey, I've had to deal with prominent members leaving my favourite bands too. But if Anne-Marie the replacement, then I'll take the old Little Mix in a heartbeat. See, Little Mix, for all the aspects of them that get under my skin, they have personality and they have vocal talent. Not the natural charisma vacuum, Anne-Marie. Her entire brand is shallow as balls breakup songs that desperately try to relate to the youth of today, and more often than not, fail. This collab already sounds like a recipe for disaster, but this chorus has the most obnoxious way of telling someone to kiss your ass like ever. And replacing ass in such a way, or ass for the Americans, can only be pulled off by one person, and that's Craig David. It may have a catchy Calypso pop beat, that's a thing apparently, but the song basically encompasses everything I hate about both artists. Just watch me dance. This song's mainly on here for a pet peeve of mine, lazy sampling, and here we have two British DJs crapping all over Stromae, I hope I pronounced that right. A lot on dance, a bit annoying but hey, it's kind of a banger. And then comes Ow Ow which is basically the same song but features a shittier beat and one of the most overrated pop singers as far as professional critics go, sorry not sorry, bitch. Seriously, what actual reason is there to listen to this over A on dance? Are people really that disturbed by songs in foreign languages? Possibly accurate given that Stromae's only hit over here. Oh well, at least the comment section appears to agree with me, so my faith in humanity has been temporarily restored. Maroon 5 is an ad that has somehow never made it to one of these lists, but that changes today because the Adam Levine ego experience is quite literally lost in the masses of generic bland pop music. Not that they haven't been for a while, but this is a strong contender for their worst offence yet. Reminder that Maroon 5 is a seven piece band. Oh, right. Man, the press didn't pick up on that, did they? 
Oh yeah, and the song itself is incredibly stale, with the core of that served as nothing but soulless ear candy. Also, the glitchy effect on the word sound just feels so out of place. Also, also, does anyone think Adam's voice just gets more and more irritating? Remember in the beginning how I said that some songs are mainly on here because of how bad they are for their respective artists? Here's one of the major examples on that on this list. Right when we all thought Coldplay was going to make a tremendous rebound upon the release of their fantastic 10 minute piece, Coloratura, they released what would turn out to be their shittest album yet, and I know a lot of people hated Higher Power. Sure, it's not great and is clearly riding the coattails of Blinding Lights and other synthwave songs, but still pretty pleasing to listen to. Not this awful pitch shifted mess. You can pretty much call from the title alone that it's going to suck, but as a pretty big Coldplay fan, it pains me just how bad this is, quite possibly their worst song to date. Apparently the higher voice is supposed to resemble an alien, but just use a vocoder or something. The only reason why I didn't put it any higher is because it's just an album track that even the hardcore Coldplayers are going to forget within a year. When Chris Martin finally joins in about 1 minute and 20 seconds into the track with a normal voice, thank god, it's fine, but it's a rough list and that makes 3 minutes seem like 3 hours. Oh boy, now we've got to talk about Ed Sheeran, who since 2017 has been about as inconsistent as my opinion on Tesco brand fizzy drinks. While it's not as awful as Shape of You, probably due to its decent Liverpool theme, it still feels like a piss take as someone who's been a fan of the man since 2014. My biggest problem with the song, and I'm sure a lot of people will agree on this, his vocals are auto-tuned to the point they're almost unrecognisable. Literally the first thing that comes up when you Google the song is, is it really Ed Sheeran singing Bad Habits? Musically, the song is... fine. Just kind of underwhelming for the ginger snap of pop, but the vocal processing completely kills its qualities, and not even a vampire makeover can save it. The album was pretty decent as well, so talk about a shite lead single. Even before Drake released an album with one of the worst artworks I've ever seen, he was putting out stinkers. Case in point, what's next? While it's not as much of an embarrassment as Toosie Slide, it's extremely irritating with its repetitive production and the amount of times he says OK in the chorus. Add to that the A's and you've got an awful song that proves Drake needs to take some time off. Like the dude's putting out an album almost every year, yet I've not heard anything good out of him for quite some time now. Tom Grennan is an artist I want to hate on too much, as he seemed like a nice guy. He was pretty entertaining when he appeared on Nevermind the Buzzcocks, and was a show stealer in Live Aid 2021. Yeah, my Britishness is really showing right now. But his music is blander than unsalted crisps. This slab of radio pop rock filler turned out to be a huge hit in the UK. It hung around the radio like an eggy fire and was a hit across Europe and Australia too. Why? He's really not a good singer at all. He almost sounds like he's screwing his throat like trying to force these words out. And the lyrics suck too. From one of the most overused metaphors out there to the most blatant rip-off of Counting Stars ever. Expect to see One Republic on this list later. But yeah, there's nothing special about this song at all. If you've not heard it, you're not missing out. If you've watched any of my videos with the word worsen since, since 2019, you'll know that I f***ing hate Jerry Cinnamon. But after having a few somewhat tolerable tracks in 2020, he released this god-awful song that alternative stations tortured me with in late 2020 and early 2021. Its intro sounded like a Cure rip-off, and then a cheesy synth hook, okay, and then some fairly uninspired lyrics with a delivery that screams of I am blue and f***ing deep-fried Mars bars. I'm digging myself into a hole here, but what I'm getting at is that the song is blah for a while, until the outro, then it's just plain horrible. The last minute is just a lardy da refrain. Some singers can pull this off. Yeah, Jerry Cinnamon isn't one of them. It's not only lazy, but laughably naff. Makes me think twice about ordering churros from now on. Rumors are true, yeah. What you heard, that's true, yeah. I f him and you, yeah. If you believe I do that. Well, talk about a match made in hell. I've made it clear in these kinds of videos before that I don't like Lizzo. One, because of her comments against music critics, and two, because her music sucks. But at least she can sing and she can play the flute, which is more than what I could say about the featured artist on this song. You probably know I passionately dislike Cardi B. And I only confined up to an honourable mention because I knew I was going to be talking about her anyway. But back to the main artist, and we all know what Lizzo's entire brand is by now. Here she's spewing a load of, you guessed it, rumours, the internet loves to throw around, and basically succumbing to them in the worst way. 
Nobody needs another Owning the Hater song, especially with a straight up unlistenable way Lizzo pukes these lyrics out, and Cardi's verse is stereotypical Cardi bullshit. The saving grace of the chorus, with Lizzo at least singing decently, along with a nice blast part, even if it's probably not real, but this deserved much better than the song is given. Oh, and P.S. the black people made rock and roll line is completely irrelevant, given that Lizzo is pretty much the antithesis of that. I've never really talked about One Republic on this channel, have I? Hey, they're a pretty decent band. Or at least were at one point. Camping Stars and Apologise are modern classics, and Love Runs Out was a banging WrestleMania theme. Fast forward to 2021 and they released this bag of shy that is basically dead on arrival with a terrible whistle melody. Mom, can we have moves like Jagger? We already have moves like Jagger at home. Moves like Jagger. And yes, I spoke Ill of Moon 5 early on this list, but moves like Jagger still bangs. Unlike this song, that's quite literally catnip for car commercials, with not only its whistling, but its repetitive chorus, music guitar that's more flatter than old pops is dingling, and possibly the highest number of lyrical cliches packed into one rotten ass song this whole year. Didn't Wine Tedder hold a masterclass on songwriting? Like, did he not take his own advice? Or was he desperate for a hit? Yeah, I think it's the latter. Terrible. Right then, quick entry to prepare for the top three, and this song can be summarised as this. How many times does this song feel the need to repeat the phrase black black magic in the most static and repetitive delivery possible too? Now, would you believe me if I said that this isn't the first song title black magic to make it onto one of these worst lists? Yeah, sorry little mix for the grief I gave you regarding your song of the same name back in 2015, because this song is worse. What also doesn't help are the incredibly basic lyrics that sound like someone was just flipping through a glossary of magical words and phrases. Right now, let's get on to the heartbreaker. Yeah, this entry's gonna be rough. It was rough watching this, and now it's rough speaking this into a mic and making a video out of it. Because Imagine Dragons is a band that I've been into since 2013. Like, that's three years before I got into what would eventually become my favourite band, Muse. So when the Dragon Band announced they had an upcoming album produced by the one and only Rick Rubin, and was to be an incredibly introspective album detailing lead singer Dan Reynolds' split and reconcilement with his wife, I for one was pretty excited. Hoping for a comeback after their previous two albums weren't all that, and then they released a joint singles Follow You and Cutthroat. Follow You is a pretty generic song that doesn't hold a candle to Bring Me The Horizon song of the same name, but it's okay. Cutthroat? Mm. <laughs> I know a lot of fans like the song, they love the energy, something is the best thing they've put out since Smoke and Mirrors. But I'm sorry, it absolutely has to be said. Cutthroat sucks! Those god-awful screams. The second best Reynolds is a good singer, but not a good screamer, and you're false to find that out the hard way through this utterly horrendous piece of dogpile. It's difficult to decide whether this beats out Thunder as ID's worst song. Thunder just missed out on my 2017 list, but in retrospect it really should have made it on, and the fact it pretty much killed their reputation just makes it worse. I'd argue on an objective standpoint, Thunder's worse because it's just a trend chasing cash grab. At least Cutthroat is trying something new and actually somewhat supports their so called genre style. However, Cutthroat is definitely the more unlistenable. The verses may be tolerable, but after the second verse, there's nothing even remotely close to tolerable. Although, having said all this, they uploaded a performance video of the song and it's a lot better. It's got possibly the sickest bass line I've ever heard out of the Imaginary Reptiles, Dan's screams are more refined, and even the kazoo doesn't sound that bad, and it's fully produced and everything, so that begs the question, why wasn't this the actual version? It's not enough to keep them off this list, so go and add migraines, you get the number 3 spot. But hey, at least the album was pretty decent. <laughs> Bloody hell, what actually happened to Sia? Her reputation went from hero to zero quite literally in the past couple of years, from her feature in the downright disgusting celebrity cover of Imagine, spearheaded by Gal Gadot, to her ill-received and highly controversial film music. But her actual music might just take the cake, because she has never sounded so damn grating. She almost sounded like she's doing a tone deny impression, and no, I'm not just making that comparison because they're both Australian. And the irritating synth stabs just make things worse. It sounds like a Fisher-Price keyboard. Also, for everything I've said against all the other songs on this list, at least you can sing along to most of them. This one, hell no. One, because I can't understand what the f*** she's saying, and two, because it has too many freaking syllables. Also, it features everyone's favourite cliché, the third verse rapper. Yay! And it stinks. Sure, the animated video may raise a few eyebrows with its depiction of Sia as Jessica f***ing Rabbit contrasting with her real life image, but there's nothing good about the song at all, and it flopped harder than a fortune teller fish. So I think people actually got the memo that this song is sh**.
the game of the Taco Bell. That's right, got you running for your life, got you praying on your knees that you make it through the night. Yeah, you stopping. So for number one, I went with a song that most of you probably haven't heard, and that's a big contrast to last year when I pretty much knew right at the beginning what the number one spot would go to. This year, not so much. When I stumbled across this, I didn't know what to say. Except, oh my god, Pathroach, what are you doing? So you remember Last Resort, right? Cut my wife into pieces, this is my cheap divorce. Or something like that. Yeah, never been that keen on Daddy Cock, but they have some good songs to their name. However, they released a total dog sh album in 2019, and then doubled down with this absolute travesty. No, it's not their first time collaborating with rappers, but it's their first time making anything even close to this bad. And it's not just bad because of how different it is to their usual stuff. It's bad by itself. From its awkward ukulele to its clunky raps and worst of all, this really awful saxophone that sounds faker than Kim Kardashian. It's P. Roach going full hip hop in a way, but it will never be thrift shop. Which is fitting given that I often see their CDs in thrift shops. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry if you like this song, sorry if you think it's good, but you know it's not. Even if you get some enjoyment of how purposely outrageously silly it is, um, how? Also, no matter how bad Jason Allen Butler's parts are, they seem tame compared to whatever the f Swaco is. Like, is he burping? Real talk, my mom hates the song and Papa Roach are literally her favourite band. I don't know if this is a one-off single or if it's a lead-off single for their next album, which would be an interesting choice to say the least, but one thing's for sure. P. Roach are hella insecure in the comment section, aren't they? Bruh, you all knew the negative response was coming, and I'd strongly argue the negative response was warranted. And it's my pick for worst song of 2021. <laughs> That's the list. What is your most hated song of the year? Comment your thoughts below, leave a like on this video, and thanks so much for stopping by, and remember, it's just my opinion.